With the animated X-Men series coming out, I thought there would be no better time than now to just take a quick look at my whole collection of X-Men official as well as custom Lego minifigures. And this is kind of an interesting collection for me where I have all these minifigures. A lot of people will put them in cases and everything, but for me, my main display for these X-Men minifigures is actually in my Danger Room mock. Because really, it would just be a shame to have all these minifigures in a case where... They're just sitting there. I want to do something fun with my X-Men characters. So the Danger Room is just perfect for that, displaying them all over the place. So I'm going to continue doing that. But for today, here are all the minifigures sort of set up on stand. And there's quite a bit of them. So to make this a little easier for me, I'm going to take out all of the Fox X-Men characters. And I'll do all those movie characters in their own video eventually. But let's start from the beginning of the Lego X-Men and start with Wolverine. Wolverine, or should we say the Batman of Marvel, maybe even the Iron Man of the X-Men, but this minifigure has been made, or character I should say, has been made six different times by Lego, starting with the Astonishing X-Men suit here from the 2012 helicopter set with Deadpool, and they knocked it out of the park right away using the Lego vampire piece that was also used for the Joker, and I think that this head probably has the best face print for the minifigure out of any of the Wolverines, honestly. One downside, it didn't feature the molded cowl. It did feature a printed version though, which is good. At least you have the option there that in universe it makes sense. He doesn't have the mask on since it is down around the neck. And using the werewolf claws here were also a good choice. Unless these were made for the character. I can't quite remember, but they're perfect for Wolverine. So it makes sense that they've used them this whole time. And another cool thing that I have in my collection is an overprinted pair of air mags by minifigure dreams printed by citizen brick for this minifigure in the custom lego world and over print is when they take an existing lego print or part like the wolverine legs here and print more custom printing over that print to make them rare and exclusive so probably a pretty limited part not many of those are going to exist but glad to have it and this was a great start for lego marvel and if only if they continued putting out great X-Men figures like this, but it didn't really happen. Going up from that one was a bit of an upgrade, but also a totally different suit. I did upgrade the legs on this one with the Catman legs from the Lego Batman movie minifigure series. This came out in the second full set for the X-Men and was the 80s brown suit, which also looks great. You know, you really can't complain about Wolverine in a comic suit. Just has the simple details that you definitely need to get the character looking right and featured the wolverine cowl mask part for the first time one thing about this is that it is printed with the black it's not dual molded or anything like that so there is a bit of a chance that the design could be off depending on your copy and it was good to see them bring out a second suit instead of just reusing the one they already had getting the mask off you can see that they did a goggle print to explain the whites of the eyes versus when they do that for Batman. It ends up being just like a white bar above the eyes. This looks a little bit weird. Goggles make a lot of sense. And we got a new face print as well. In the set, you did get one of the Wolverine hair pieces to go with it. And you can see that the face designs are completely different. So you have all these different facial expression options. And I guess if you really wanted to, you could use the goggle side with the hair. Not gonna look super great, but it's good to have options. Another good attempt, good to get another Wolverine suit, and let's go on to the next one. And this is where I'm gonna have a bit of a gap in my collection because I don't have the Mighty Micros Wolverine, but I do have the Mac version of the Tiger Stripe suit. So out of the first three Wolverine Infinity figures, you basically got all of the three main suits. You had a certain version of the Tiger Stripe one with some nice shading using dark blue on those stripes, which was a bit weird versus just straight black, but I do like the effect. And all of these were also in that bright light orange instead of straight yellow. So they are gonna be a bit unique in that regard. This one again features that nice mask printing that is great to have. And on top of that, you're gonna get another head with two more expressions to add to your collection of Wolverine faces. It's gonna be pretty similar to the one that came with the X-Jet originally but the other side is gonna have a smile instead of a grouchy sort of frown. So 
I would definitely say this is in the same ballpark as that brown suit one, the face at least, where they are pretty similar and have the same level of detailing, but are different enough that you can use these for different stop motions if you really wanted to, and here's that with the face and the goggles again. A bit goofy. I did upgrade this one by switching out the shoulder pad there, which I think is a Ninjago part or something like that. I know it came on the Taser suit. I also switched out the hands for dark blue instead of the lighter blue, and then I switched out the hit piece for dark blue to keep it all consistent. When it came out, it did just come with straight bright yellowish orange legs, no blue. We're going to run into that issue again with one of the figures in a couple, and it's a lot better when you switch out the light blue parts. It just fits more cohesively ends up being another good Wolverine. Another couple years passed, and then the Marvel Collectible Minifigure Series 2 came out with this Tiger Stripe Wolverine, which is going to be pretty much based off the animated series, but also obviously the comics from the 90s. This is going to be the first Wolverine as well to feature yellow plastic parts instead of the bright light orange, so it is going to be slightly different there and a little bit more accurate to the comics. It's going to have great arm printing with the hair, they attempt the shoulder pads with some weird sleeve print, and then also has the dual molded blue legs with printing on the side. So not a whole lot to complain about here. Mask is still going to be printed, not dual molded, so there's always this slight chance that your print could be off on that. And they kind of changed up the face style here. You know, still uses the goggles. Good to see the continuity there, but goes for a much more cartoony look. No stubble or anything like that. And a bit goofy. Plus, they also got rid of the vampire hairpiece for the character and downgraded to the weird widow's peak. It's not inaccurate, it just doesn't look the best and isn't my preferred look for Wolverine. But the rest of this minifigure is amazing. Nothing to complain about there. And this is going to be the peak Wolverine for now but not the last one. One more to go. And this is going to be the Wolverine that was in the newest X Jet which you can tell looking at it right now is going to be basically the exact same version from the collectible minifigure series, but with less detailing. So basically just a worse version. Look at those legs, no side printing. The front printing is very poorly printed where it is leaking through. That's just because the original legs were that dual mold, so they didn't have to print the yellow. So you do get exclusive print on it, which is nice, I guess. And I'm thinking about it, I might have actually switched the heads here between the two of them. But that is another positive here, is that you get two different heads. So like the first couple Wolverine minifigures, you could swap them around, get some more expressions. So I would definitely say that is a positive, is that they didn't reuse the face. And I think that is going to be one of the most useful parts, is just having more head options versus the different suits. You know, I'm pretty sure everybody did pick up the collectible minifigure version anyway, and this can just be parts fodder, you know. You get the hex jet for Rogue, and that's really about it. But that is the last Wolverine minifigure that I have in my collection. I do have one more on pre order for sure, and I am going to be picking up another version of Wolverine down the line, but we'll stop there for now. With Wolverine being Weapon X, you also have Deadpool, also part of the Weapon X program. And this is one of the more rare LEGO Marvel minifigures, and it definitely deserves that status, being a great version of that original era sort of Deadpool design, basically ripped straight out of the comics. My one real complaint is that the belt buckle, the eyes just aren't shaped correctly, I feel like. That's probably an area that it could have been improved on. And the pouches are red instead of brown, which looks a little bit weird, but is probably accurate to some drawings. Cool things like that leg print there with his sort of thigh pouches, very comics, and use the Distan, I think that's how you pronounce it, from Prince of Persia's sheath there, so you can get some katanas going. I would say for this classic version, using the brown one is still good. I feel like for other iterations of the character, I'd rather use the black version that came out with Blade, I think, in the Daily Bugle first, but is also available on Pick a Brick now. I'll just get that off quick to see the back which, like all the other Marvel figures, just some back detailing, but it does have a bit more detail with all those pouches and that black design continuing around. You can see this one's a little bit battle damage from me owning it and the sheath rubbing against the printing. 
it's covered for the most part. So not a super big deal to me. And maybe just down the line, if I find a torso for a decent price, I'll buy a new one and switch it out. I've already done that with the head and the legs. So it's a bit of a Theseus ship situation here with my original Deadpool minifigure. But I love this minifigure. It's always been one of my favorite Marvel characters and Marvel minifigures of all time. Definitely fitting, but this isn't it for Deadpool because Lego put out two different Comic-Con versions of the character. First one that came out was Deadpool the Duck, which is Deadpool and Howard the Duck crossed over. This is not an official minifigure. It is a custom printed one, but do we still really like the design. Obviously, since it is a Comic-Con minifigure originally, it's going to be pretty unobtainable to the casual collector. It's going to go for a couple hundred dollars, and I'm not interested in that. I'll take the custom printed one that is still an official Lego torso and then legs. The head must be a custom mold because I'm not sure how they would have gotten a red version of this Donald Duck head otherwise. I think the yellow on the beak is probably a little off than what the official would be since it seems a bit brighter. Other than that though, you know, the print quality is going to be awesome. Torso is going to be great. Yeah, this is just a fun character that Lego decided to put out. Best part about it is going to be that torso and I'll show off a cool combo that you can do in a bit. But that is going to be that character. Let's move on to the next one. Another Comic-Con Deadpool, this time being Deadpool the Kid, or just Cowboy Deadpool, featuring a cowboy vest with some Deadpool decorations, some ammo belt stuff, which replaces his usual pouches. See the really cool printing with the scarf kind of wrapping around the back. Just the Deadpool symbol with the guns also looks really cool. Continues to the front where it's also on the belt buckle. You get another holster with more Deadpool branding. But the best part about this is going to be that head, which is a bit covered right now. I'll get those parts off, which will be a very 2000 style Deadpool mask with some great shading, something that was missing off the original, just that solid black. You can see the improvements on the Deadpool minifigure here. And like I said, that torso on Deadpool the Duck is a very great design. And these parts go together pretty well, just like Voltron by combining all of the different parts from all the minifigures. You can basically make a very cool modern version of Deadpool. You know, the torso might not have super accurate muscle lines since Deadpool Duck is probably a little bit pudgy, but honestly, it kind of could work as just a tight suit. And I would definitely say that this is my preferred version of Lego Deadpool. You know, the original is great, but I just love that version of this Deadpool suit that came out in the comics in that mid-2000s. I think the straps look good and then the kind of silver belt buckle parts are also a great addition to the suit. But this is a great mashup and this is how I've been displaying all these parts. I haven't had the minifigures together because this just looks too good. But that's not it for Deadpool. I do have a side character for Deadpool being Agent X. This is the only UV printed minifigure in my X-Men collection. But what a great figure by Engineerio. The printing on this is very clean and you can barely tell that it is UV. Do like the fact that that is how it is you know it has a little bit of detailing but for the most part it is pretty simplistic so pretty passing and for me when i got really into deadpool i was collecting any sort of series that he appeared in so of course i got as many agent x issues that i could deadpool wasn't in any of the ones that i ended up getting for cheap but i'll definitely have to pick up the final issue of that series eventually but this is a cool figure. I'm glad I ended up getting it. So thank you KO Customs for hooking me up with this. And let's move back into some official figures. Frequent flyer in the X-Men line. We have Magneto featuring a round two by two plate as a metal disc. I know in the original set it was dark gray, not the light gray, but that's what I had handy quick. And this is another great comic book character. Purple Cape is great. And I really love the simplicity of the original 2012 minifigures from that set where they are just straight comic detail. You don't need a whole lot, solid shapes and then muscle lines. Back of the torso is going to feature the same level of detailing and just continues the pattern of just having what you need, more of the sort of collar stud design. And one of the areas where this figure shines the most is that molded helmet, which was just perfect right out of the gate, featuring nice purple printing in the front that is iconic to the helmet design, obviously. And just a great part, probably one of the better superhero molds of all time. 
Face prints are going to be pretty good too. You get the neutral face and then you get an angry one. So you can have him be more of an ally or full on battle mode if you wanted to. Love this minifigure. And honestly, that Deadpool helicopter might not be the best build now, but the minifigure selection made up for it. Great Magneto and is the perfect comic book version. But there are more. Just like Wolverine, I am missing the Mighty Micros version, but I do have the second version with his weird purple deep V, which is another comic book accurate suit, but it's just so weird to have in Lego form. And we'll see the Magneto minifigure where they're just putting out random variants. I feel like we probably would have been okay if they did just put out the original suit again. I guess I wouldn't have minded too much, but you can see this is where Lego's printing errors kind of show up. The skin and that sort of collar neck area is a little pale, probably too pale for what it should be looking at the head right next to it. White belt looks good though, so that's a bit surprising. And just like the other one, back printing is just gonna be those muscle lines continuing the belt. That head print is gonna be the exact same as the previous Magneto. I'll just switch it around so we can see the angry expression this time around. And it also came with another one of the molded helmets in this set. So you have two different options for the character. And then there was the great X-Men hiatus onto the next Magneto. Again, comic book suit, but this is pretty much based off of the animated series. You get another round piece to be like a metal disc that he can fly on. And you get your big M Magneto with his sleeveless shirt, new face print, which I do think is a good option, and long hair. Just get the cape turned around quick. And just some back lines, the cape kind of wraps around in the printing too. And you get a nice friendly smiling face, just like the other Magneto where he can be one of the team's allies, which is gonna be fitting for the series coming out. Another cool version of Magneto from the comics. Again, probably would have rather gotten an updated version of the classic version, maybe with red and purple dual molded legs, especially since the older Magneto hasn't been in a set in 12 years now. So no new X-Men villains though. All we get is Magneto. That's a bit disappointing, you know. Speaking of that, we'll move on to the other characters from the X-Jet. And that's where we'll get to one of the flaps of the line. We got this buildable Sentinel that is too small. It has weird parts, so you can't really upgrade the figure since it is on the weird dome piece. And then the sort of chest piece part they used is printed in a way that it's, it's, it's so small. Not a lot of you know usability for that, for building something else. It would have been better if it was flat tiles, a couple of them maybe, so you could build around them but it has some articulation, nothing really on the back, just some black. And this is just like kind of a crappy action figure, you know, you can kind of bend the arms, but also not really. So there's not really arm articulation. The legs are where you get a decent bit of movement. You get them in a bit of an action pose. And as an accessory in the CMF line, they threw in another Sentinel head being a battle damaged one printed on the same dome piece. So it's just as useless. But that is the official Lego Sentinel. And you can see why I would build my custom one. If you want to see that design, check out the video in the corner and we'll show it off at the end again. Also in that x set, we did get Cyclops. So our first new X-Men minifigure other than Wolverine. And this is going to be pretty plain design based off of the classic Cyclops suit. So this is basically first generation X-Men. And it did continue on to some other different eras. Nothing super great about this minifigure. You know, the head looks a bit weird with the stud showing. It does have some printing continued on the back. And it is going to feature the same sort of bright light orange that Wolverine had on his minifigure. So they are continuing the continuity there. Belt design looks good, but... I kind of prefer the Jim Lee version. A lot of other people kind of do too, it seemed like. So this was a bit disappointing. Obviously, if you were a fan of Cyclops in like the 60s, 70s to maybe early 80s, this would be the look for you. But not my cup of tea. Not a terrible minifigure though. And this is definitely going to be one of the cases where the newer version is going to just kick its butt. 
because the version in the new X-Jet is that Jim Lee design based off of the animated series especially, but so 90s with all the pouches, two different X symbols, the weird arm strap thing that probably doesn't have any real utility. This version is a bit modified from the official one where I threw on the dual molded blue and yellow legs there to give him his boots, switched out the hip piece for a yellow one, switched out the hair because I thought the one that they used showed a little bit too much of his weird forehead band thing. This covers it up a lot more and brings the hairline a lot closer to his Cyclops goggle thing. This figure is cool too because you get the alternative face with a more stern look. So I like that, getting the multiple face options just means you can do more with your minifigures instead of just having the one look. One thing that is good about this one too is that the facial print just has a better flesh tone. This one had that weird tan look that Lego ended up having in a lot of their minifigures. And having them side by side, you can see this one has a bit more of that shading on the visor to give it more of a shine. This one's just straight red. So there are some positives and negatives to both designs, but I think this is my favorite version that LEGO has done. One more official X-Men minifigure from that original extra set, because of course we also got this really great storm. Not perfect, but print-wise I'd definitely say this is great. The legs are a great representation of the original appearance sort of design. Same with the torso, that's also great. Hairpiece though, that's where this falls apart a little bit, where it's just the generic female hairpiece. Nothing great going on there. It's missing the molded crown part that is pretty iconic for a storm, but we did get this really cool cape piece that sort of hangs down. It's covering a bit of the torso though. And we also got a nice neutral, non-powered up face for her on the other side of her head. You just see typical Lego superheroes from the era, just back detailing a little bit of muscle lines. So this is a good first attempt, you know, not perfect, but without making another mold, this is probably as close as they could get. I've seen some people use better hair pieces, and I definitely need to upgrade this one. But glad to get more X-Men at the time. Unfortunately, we hit the hiatus around here. We did get another Storm minifigure, though, which again, like Wolverine, was part of that CMF series. There are some arguments about what her comic book suit color is, whether it is black or very shiny or white. In the animated series, they definitely made it seem white, and this is based on the animated series as well. It also just represents a good version of her suit, being this one the more classic one, this one kind of that in-between, between modern and then the original. But very good here, where the X symbols printed nice and clean. This cape seems to be a little bit easier to pose around, where if you fold it just right, there's a little bit of friction and lays down nice. So that's good for displaying it. I do like that that happens. This is kind of one of those hybrid designs where she has the mohawk, like her more leather jacket look. Not that it has to be tied to that suit, obviously. And I do really like the face print on this, that has that sort of cobalt eye coloring. I think that looks really cool. And you also get some nice boot printing there. Like the other minifigure, back of the torso is just going to have some back lines, belt lines continuing. And the shoulder pads are also a nice addition to give it more detail. Really liking the storm here. All of the CMF minifigures were amazing and really great additions to the X-Men collection. Just like Wolverine, I also got the Air Mag version of the storm minifigure here. So fun to have that. It's just too bad that there were duplicates. Same goes for the X-Jet, but I guess it makes sense. Like I pointed out for Magneto, it's been 12 years. People are missing these minifigures, so it's good that people are getting opportunities to get them again. But we did get one new X-Men out of the CMF, which I would say was probably one of the better ones, being Beast. The hairpiece on this is amazing with the ears showing as well. That is a great part, especially with the dual molded black, I believe. I don't think that's printed. Mug just flew off, unfortunately, but... It also came with an X-Men mug. But yeah, it's dual molded, so that's even better. You get some fur lines going on the muscle line, so a bit of a mix-up there. Belt looks great. You get some toe printing, which I know some people hate. The legs have the shorts print. You bend the legs, though, and that printing is going to break up. 
bound to happen with these minifigures, but you get the glass look, you get the angry fighting look, so good expression options here. So this is the official version. I also did get a custom version, so let's show that off too. And this is a slightly upgraded KO Customs Beast. Hairpiece is going to be that Wolverine hairpiece. Of course, in blue, it is custom molded, not an official part. I threw on some gin blue claws here to also upgrade it. And you can see it is pretty similar to the CMF version. It does have a bit more detailing and printing. You see the shorts actually line up right. There aren't gaps at the hip and more toes. So that's good to see. Do like the hairpiece on this one more. I have been displaying this version of the minifigure with it to just have a more definitive version of the character. But like I pointed out with the legs bending, still a bit of an issue here, but I do think there is a little bit more printing on the shorts, so you can bend them a little bit. You can see the side legs are printed with more hair, something that only the front of this pair of legs has. And the eyes of this one are going to be blue, so that's a little bit different, but I think the animated version of the character does have that coloring. I think the mouth looks a bit better on here with the more sharp teeth. And on the back, you get the calmer version as well. So both versions of these minifigures are going to have pretty similar face options, but they are a bit different. And on the back, there are a little bit more bits of printing for the shorts. But Beast is great. Glad to have this character especially since they are so prominent in the animated series. Very cool addition, and we can go on to another figure that was made by LEGO technically, but I don't have. And this is going to be another Comic-Con minifigure, being Phoenix. I obviously don't have the official Comic-Con version, but I do have this really great custom printed version with some really cool metallic gold printing on it. I do really like the design. I wish it had the black above the Phoenix symbol to be that collar sort of design. That's really the only thing missing from this that I wish it had. The hair piece is it's custom painted, not an official piece. And it came with some alternate expressions with some angry phoenix looks. There's another alternate head. Not going to grab it. I did review this, though. If you want to see that video, it's in the corner there. This was a grail of mine for a really long time, and I was lucky to get a good deal on it on whatnot. But love this figure. Glad to have it in the collection. I do have another version of Jean as well. And this version is very fitting, looking at all those other animated series minifigures. This is by MRM Prints. I did recently review it. And it's just a great design for a 90s or animated series Jean, featuring great torso and leg printing that continues that design. I don't know why the version of this hair piece is super tight on the head. But you also get an alternative face where she's a bit more angry. So good to have alternate expressions like I'm always saying. And you get arm printing, you get side of the leg printing. Lots of great detailing. And this is a great version of the character. Glad to have this too where I'm almost getting that 90s animated series collection done. But still missing a couple characters. Really just Jubilee. And we can get back to those official minifigures. And Jean was a bit of a detour as we also had Rogue in the newest X-Jet, featuring pretty decent printing. I think the legs are great. The torso, the yellow is a little bit dark, but overall the design is pretty much what I'm hoping for. You know, dual molded arms would have been cool, but it's not unrealistic that she could have a long sleeve jacket instead of the short sleeve, weird vest type jacket. Hair piece has a little bit to be desired, but I think the face shines pretty well with the headband look. You get the angry face in the back as well. So you have some good options there. And this is the last official X-Men. I do have one more mutant character though, which is Firestar from the Daily Bugle set. She's a mutant, but doesn't really do much in the X-Men sort of area. Spending a lot more time in the Spider-Man sort of realm and with his amazing friends. But it was great to get another mutant character. And like all of the other X-Men characters, basically features another alternative face. That is something funny to point out, that the original Cyclops is the only minifigure without an alternative expression. So that's interesting to realize, but like in the mask design there, the shading on this minifigure is a little bit goofy maybe. I don't know if I love the design there but 
Always great to get more X-Men and continues that bright light orange instead of yellow suit. But what a weird outlier to get an X-Men character in a Spider-Man set. But can't complain. Let's go back into the customs and we'll take a look at Iceman now. And this is one of my first custom X-Men minifigures that I got, being the KO Customs Iceman or Frosty minifigure. Features design cues from the Electro minifigure that also use the transparent blue plastic where it has that white outline around it and dark blue to give it some more detailing. It is a transparent plastic, so some of the printing ends up getting a little bit lost if you look at it in super bright lighting or against a blue background, but this was very cool to get at the time. I wanted to get this to go with the Firestar that came out, and I think this originally released in that 2020 sort of time period before I started collecting custom minifigures. The hairpiece was a later edition where it came with the updated version of this minifigure, but I do like the extra texture there. I know sometimes for Iceman, he just has the flat head. Sometimes he has the hair, but you can always take out the hair piece if you wanted to. Do really like this custom version, but there is a better one, and that's gonna be the KO Customs Frosty or Iceman version two. And this features a more pearlescent blue transparent plastic, which is a much better look. Looks a lot more icy, and since it is a solid, color you can see the printing a lot better features a pretty similar smiley face you get the hair piece as well back printing is just going to be the back lines and the belt like usual one cool thing is that on the sides of the legs of his minifigures he always adds that little bit of line for the trunks to add a little bit more detail not a lot more you can ask for here but you also got another expression being angry for fighting and a brick built ice trail to add more action to your minifigure in your display this is one of their better minifigures and one of my favorites in my collection. Let's go ahead and jump into another older minifigure. And this will be a bit of a detour going back to the Phoenix Customs Havoc. I think this was a 2015 or 16 minifigure, but features really great arm printing as well as a torso and head print that are perfect for the character. I love the glow effect where it has that white and also the light blue around it. That works great to demonstrate the suit and also his powers from the comics. The gold for the belt is also a good print. And I think the hairpiece works. You know, it is one of the more generic male hairpieces, but you're looking at this like early 2000s Havoc design. That is how he looks. Couldn't ask for more from this figure. I was glad to pick it up. MRM Prince does have a different version of Havoc out that is still available for retail and is also a good option if you are looking for this character, but it's always cool to pick up an older minifigure like this one and see how great of a minifigure it was where it still stands up to today, especially comparing it to the other X-Men minifigures. And if you have the official Cyclops, it's good to have the Summers brothers together, but glad to have this one. We have more customs to look at. One of my favorite characters, just because they are a must-get, is Professor X here by MRM Prince, featuring a great green suit. Back has some suit lines. That's it, though. No alternate faces for this character or anything. You could buy another head from them for 10 bucks, which I skipped on. I think this expression is great for the character. And not only do you get the minifigure, because you also get a brick-built hover chair. So adds to your ability to display the character. It's in tan, I probably would prefer it to be in yellow, but haven't really taken a look at the parts availability to do that on my own yet. It's a good build though. I think it is pretty based off of the game, just like some of the other minifigures that they've done. But this definitely works and is a highlight of my collection. Other than Jean and Professor X, my only other MRM X-Men minifigure is Emma Frost here and it was my first figure from them in the first order that I bought. And it's a decent minifigure. It is pretty simple and not necessarily one of her more iconic outfits, but at least it's not like a pervy minifigure like a lot of other customizers would probably do. I did switch out the head here. This is just a generic female head by Citizen Brick. Kept the hair though, that is decent. And I think having the cape on, it's a nice add. Not a lot to say about it. The back of the torso just has a continued design for her corset. 
but thought might as well since I don't really think anybody else has put her out in the past. But decent figure, let's keep on going. And how about another X-Men villain being the Juggernaut here by Ling. The helmet looks really nice, the texturing on it is really cool, but it throws off the proportions a little bit since the body is just normal minifigure sized. If everything was scaled up a little bit more, I think that's when the helmet looks a bit better. Since on this character right now, it is very tall and not very wide, it ends up being less of a smooth dome and more of just a huge bump. I do really like the molded arm parts though, where it has the bracelet as well as the sort of brass knuckle parts. That's really cool, nice to see. Also features molded belt, which is accurate to the comics. Another great example of just a comic book minifigure with the right amount of detailing. This one does feature some inside the leg printing, which is a nice addition to the overall details. Arm printing as well. So it does go a little bit above the usual that I would hope for in the sort of comic Marvel character realm, which is good, honestly. It's always nice to get more printing. Got a really great deal on this one. It is very cool to have, but I would definitely love a bigger version that was somewhere in between minifigure scale and then big figure because I don't know if I really love Juggernaut as a huge, huge character. You know, you just have some size though, so wouldn't be totally against it, but good to have some representation of him as this minifigure. And Juggernaut didn't come alone. It was a two-pack with this version of Colossus here, also based off of the Astonishing X-Men. So if you have the Wolverine, those two will end up going together. It could pass as a classic comic version, but the belt detailing and the armor sort of bit definitely make it that version specifically. Leg printing is going to be great, and overall just the silver printing is going to look nice. You're probably going to want to be a little careful with the hands. Maybe switch those out for light bluish gray instead to prevent the ink from rubbing off if you're going to use them in any way. All the molded accessories are going to be awesome. Really like the hair here, that it is that nice smooth metal looking design that is pretty typical for the comics or even the movies. And I'll just quick take off the vest. And Ling also detailed the whole torso underneath the molded parts to give you more options for displaying since he does end up having this type of look in the comics in different iterations. One thing I'll say is that it's too bad that there isn't more color on the face. I think white for the teeth or the eyes would have added a little bit more and made it look a little better. That's really my only complaint here. You know, you can see the side of the torso has the lines printed all around. They are all straight lines. No bends where his muscles are or anything like that. But this is not my only Colossus minifigure because I also have the version by KO Customs, which is definitely the classic giant size version. It's going to have a lot of the same sort of techniques with the metallic silver molded parts, really just being that sort of vest piece, which is based off of the Lego hockey pad, but it is custom molded in-house probably. And it's nice that you can see on the torso there's belt printing that continues the design that is also on the vest, so there is some continuity there with the design. Legs are also nice and printed around. Really like the face here, and you can see what I was talking about where the white printing just looks a little bit better, makes the detailing stand out a little bit more, so that's my preferred look. But getting the custom hair piece definitely adds to this one. I kind of go back and forth on which one of these is my favorite. The vest also comes off and has more detailing. And again, gives you the option of the shirtless look. Something cool to point out that I found out in an interview with KO is that their metal band lines, whatever you would call those, do have some curvature when they are on the muscles to show that there would be a change in depth in some way instead of just straight across. So they went a little bit above and beyond there. And I should say that both of these figures also have alternative faces that came with them. So you have two different head options. I think it'd be really fun to fig barf a perfect version for what you are looking for out of the two of them. But I love both of them. They're great for their own line of minifigures. And let's keep the train rolling with another Russian character being Omega Red, also by KO Customs. A molded vest part comes again here. It's not a full body molded part, but it does go over the shoulders as it's, you know, pretty standard for those 80s and 90s characters to have their huge shoulder pads on their designs. 
You also get some cool molded hands with the whip part sticking out. It's too bad they aren't flexible at all or anything, and then they are both different shapes. So there's a little bit of opportunity to switch up the design where you could move the hands to either side, but it would be nice to have some different options if you have maybe two sets of these. But you'd have to get two different version, two copies of the figure. I only have the one. I love the face print here. I think this is a double-sided head instead of two heads. And the metal lines on the mouth actually move depending on the expression. So that's another nice little detail, just like Colossus, where they are thinking about the real world physics, I guess, of the character and applying that to the minifigure design. Arms are going to be printed and just continues the trend of the KO Customs minifigures having the right amount of detailing. It's a comic book minifigure. You don't need to go overboard and just features the perfect amount of detailing to get the idea across of what the character is. Glad to have a villain. And we have another KO Customs minifigure, which is easily the best version of this character in Lego with their Nightcrawler. Love the printing all around where you can see that the boots are wraparound printed. And they did a really cool thing where they printed the legs as well. So when you bend them, it doesn't break up the coloring, which is gonna be important for a character like this where they're acrobatic, they're gonna be moving their limbs around a lot. Same goes for the arms, wraparound printing for the glove tops. The headpiece there actually uses the hair from an elf minifigure from the elf line, but it does have printed or painted ears to make it blue and match the skin tone. You also get another belt molded part that gives you a tail. Not going to be flexible or movable at all, but features great mold to give his tail a distinctive shape. You can flip it the other way if you want to, to give it a slightly different position if you're doing photos. And on top of everything you see here, it came with another face that was just a generic smile and buildable BAMF effects. If you want to see the overall figure, the review's up in the corner. But love this figure. Nice use of the shoulder pads too, I should say, just like what they did on Storm, but they did remove part of the neck piece there to make it a little bit more accurate to the red V shape on his character design. Nothing but positive things to say about this minifigure. I was glad I was able to track one down after the fact. Let's move to the next figure. And this is another great villain character for the X-Men by Jin and Mr. J being Sabretooth here based off of his comic book design. Molds here are going to be very detailed, which might not gel well with the other X-Men characters done by Lego or parts that would be in the Lego system. But I guess if you're going to be spending a higher amount of money and making custom parts, you might as well make them look really cool. And they definitely did that here with all the different furs as well as the hairpiece. The face though and the body detailing is definitely the Lego style. Nothing super detailed, which I love. It's cool to get the molded glove pieces to give him his weird elbow spikes and the gin claws definitely add a lot too. Figure came with two different minifigure heads, one with even more feral, angry look for even more intense battle. And the printing is gonna be good. Nothing on the inside of the legs, unfortunately, but I am not a stickler for that. Just getting it wrapped around the entire outside of the minifigure is perfect. Really can't complain here. It's good to have a saber tooth to go with all of your Wolverine minifigures. It's kind of strange that Lego hasn't done that themselves, but Maybe he's not as popular as Magneto. The Brotherhood representation by Lego is very lacking. Not that the overall X-Men representation isn't either, but I definitely need more villains, and I think that's where my collection is going to be moving into in the future. But I have another villain character, and I wish I loved this one a little bit more. I think this is one of those minifigures that's going to be perfect in concept, but in execution isn't going to be the best version it could be. And that's just because if you watch the review, you know, these molded parts just aren't very secure. Makes me a little worried to move the figure around too much because they'll just get bumped out and I won't be able to get them back in. But any sort of movement with the arms usually just knocks those tubes out like you can see there. You can try and reposition them. Obviously, when I'm doing it one hand on camera, it's going to be a little hard. But getting the molded parts is nice. It's just too bad they aren't more flexible and aren't glued in some way or secured right out of the box. 
I don't really like modifying my own minifigures if I don't have to, especially for ones that are a bit more expensive. I just would hate if I ruined it in some way. But the printing is obviously amazing. Just look at the face there, the level of shading and detailing in such a small scale is very cool to see, even for a comic book minifigure where just those subtle little details like the blue around the A on that necklace piece just look amazing. Molds are cool too. They do add some depth and texture to the minifigure. Features some really cool boot printing that wraps around the inside of the legs. So when you're ordering the render, you see this. You're thinking it's going to be perfect, but you get it in hand. It's a little disappointing. But I doubt anyone else is going to be putting out Apocalypse. So if you want to get it in your collection, this is really your only option. I am glad I picked it up, but I do wish it was improved a little bit more. And we're down to my last custom printed minifigure, being my favorite X-Men member, Gambit. Sorry, Deadpool, not actually a member of the X-Men, so I'll put you to the side and we can give Gambit the spotlight here. The majority of this minifigure is the KO Customs version, but I did get the YAFDA or YAFD Gambit head here printed on the Jin tilting part. Just because I, I was interested in just the head here on that piece where you can give it some more character when you're posing it. I thought that would be really cool to have. It does have the cigarette there. Kind of wish it didn't have that, so this would be a little bit better for my use. But it does make it unique compared to the two Gambit heads that did come with the figure originally. And this figure was amazing for the amount of accessories you got. If you want to see all those, the review is up in the corner. I'll just keep this brief. But you can see right here the really cool printed card on that transparent pink tile. White on the outside to make it seem like it is white tile getting charged up by Gambit. And a sawed off bar piece to be his bow staff. The color of the ink on here is really cool, calling back to older Lego colors. And I am, for the most part, a fan of the trench coat design that they used. It's too bad the legs get pretty limited in their motion, but I think the collar piece is definitely a cool mold that adds to the figure. If you use cloth, the plastic and the cloth just never match, so there's always like a texture change. And also just a color and sheen difference that stands out to me and I don't want that in my collection so that's definitely a good solution. I love this figure. I'm so glad to have one. I did say it's my last custom minifigure but I do have some purist minifigures that I built for my collection. The first of which is going to be Angel. A lot of people have made the same sort of design where you use one of the falcon torsos, throw on the wing pieces, I should probably switch out those clip parts, and then you use one of the flash heads since it is red with the face printed on it. I think this is the movie flash. I just like the expression on it a little bit more. And when you throw on, I think this is the second version of Lego Falcon where it is a little bit more detailed. The dark red kind of complements the red and also with the leg I used, with the knee pads, all the different reds and then dark reds just kind of join together to make a nice design. Not gonna be perfect, but gets the idea across. Really, if you just threw the angel wings on any character, it would make it Warren here, but needed a version for him in my original X-Men display, since I would have had all four of them other than him, and this is a pretty easy solution. Next one is going to be Shadow Cat, and this is kind of my own design. It's a little bit more abstract than Angel, but blue mask, big brown hair, and I use the crazy bricks arm there to have her reaching out. So that way she can use her powers to face people like Juggernaut on the floor or something. That's what I've done in the Danger Room like you saw earlier. I just thought this was a fun character. I wanted to kind of mix up the levels that minifigures were in the Danger Room. Some on the ground, some in the middle, and then some in the air. And I thought this would be a very good character to use on the ground. Just using her powers in some way. So glad I could get her in the collection. Last X-Men minifigure I have, I have the Rachel Summers Phoenix here, which just like Shadow Cat, I just needed more characters for the Danger Room to kind of spread out where they were, and I wanted a flying character. So threw this one together. I think this Star Wars Extended Universe minifigure head looks great for the sort of tattooed look that Rachel has. You could use a normal red spiky hair or this transparent one to give it a more fiery effect. 
I've gone back and forth on which one. I do think I like this one a little bit more since hair does end up having that sort of transparent look to it sometimes. If you're going to have flames and light coming from the fire, it would kind of make sense to have your hair glowing a bit more. But I could see why people wouldn't want to see the head through the side of the hair or anything like that. But for me, I think it's cool. You just got to throw on some flame effects to be her Phoenix Force wings that kind of come out sometimes. And there are a couple different Chima torsos that you could probably use for the character. I picked this one, and then same for the legs, where if you just get some red with some detailing on it, definitely could work. Honestly, you could probably even just use these simple legs like I used on Angel. Lots of options. That's what's great about the Lego catalog, is being able to just throw together a character if you want to. I know back in the day on Eurobricks, people used to throw out a ton of Marvel characters just using official Lego parts. And it's always kind of fun to work your brain and figure out solutions like this one. But, man, what a marathon. That's all my X-Men minifigures, and let's just go to the final verdict. Overall, I guess the moral of the story is that Lego X-Men characters are cool to have, but what Lego puts out is not perfect. It is crazy to me that in basically the last 10 years, Lego has released six different X-Men minifigures, and then only two of them are new characters. You can see the original sort of lineup from the two X-Men sets, and then the new CMF and Lego set figures there. I am glad to have Beast and Rogue now, but it's always a bummer when these slots and the sets are wasted by characters we already have. It hasn't been a long time, so you gotta give people a chance to buy the characters again. Fine. But as a longtime collector, it bums me out, but I'm glad new people can start collecting the X-Men, especially in their very nice 90s and animated style suits. Love to get those. But this is the demonstration of why I have to turn to customs just due to the lack of variety. And the X-Men, they're just such a colorful team. They're all very unique. And it's a team, so you need more than just three X-Men. It is good that they added the two more. So you have five official X-Men minifigures. Obviously the Phoenix from Comic-Con is gonna be pretty much unobtainable. So there is a seventh with some wiggle room. I did point it out. You can make some purest options, but it's just not gonna be the same. And this is just what I'm looking for here. A great looking team with amazing detailing. Toss in some more of the official minifigures and just keep building. That's definitely what I'm going to keep doing. I'm glad that I was able to get all these customs. The official minifigures are a good option, but I just want more and add more options for my mocks, photos, displays, all of that. The danger room is getting really full and my collection is going to keep growing as I buy more figures. So probably going to have to make a second half of this just to fit everything in and have it a little bit more spaced out. You know, in my previous versions, I did have the storm cloud going with like a tornado going. But I don't really have room for that right now. And I want to rework that and maybe motorize it a bit to make it even cooler. But let me know if you're still here. What is your favorite X-Men minifigure, custom or official for me? probably be the Nightcrawler here if the movie versions were in this video. The Deadpool from the movies by Phoenix Customs is up there as well and I'm happy to have them in my collection. If you want to see more custom Lego Marvel videos or X-Men videos, check out all the videos on my channel. I've been Brick Radiop and I'll see you in the next video.